The best car deals on the planet, without a doubt, are always private party buyers. That's right, here's part two of smart car buying, private party style. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy and author of Is That The Best You Can Do? This video brought to you by YouTube's best channel on car buying and selling, courtesy of The Homework Guy team and our super high intensity training for car buyers. Check the merch shelf below if you wanna get one of our cool shirts or hoodies like this one. Today we're going to cover more details on private party buying to help you determine if it's right for you. If you're here today watching this video, you should have already seen private party buying part one, where we hit the pros and cons, where you should shop, how to determine the fair market price for a private party car purchase, good meeting places, and avoiding a scam. Now in part two, we'll cover how to make sure it's not a stolen car, the importance of car inspections, what paperwork you need to do, and methods of payment. Finally, there will be part three with liens, how to resolve them, and how to properly report the sale, a very important step. Before we dig into the video, here's a short message from the Homework Guy team. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers, and the best part is, there's no charge. You can also email the team at info at thehomeworkguy.com with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. Buckle up, buttercup. Part two. Here we go. In case of emergency, the exits are here, 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 and here. My staff said I had to do that, so there you go. Short recap, in part one I said that private party car buying is not for everyone. When you've seen the videos in this series, you might decide you have no problem spending thousands more by going to a dealer. In fact, in part one, I showed you your savings could come to $6,500 on an $18,000 car by buying private party instead of at a dealership. A car listed at $17,699, you'll sign out around $21,500. Meanwhile, you could have bought that same car for $15,000 private party. That's incredible. That's more than a third of the selling price. If saving that kind of money excites you, well, let's get started on part two. Number one, how to make sure you're not getting stuck with a stolen car. You don't want this to be you. If you buy a stolen car when the police determine that it's stolen property, they will seize it and you're out of the picture. Totally out. No money back, nothing. For every 100,000 people in your area, 228 cars are stolen and they aren't fancy cars like you'd think. Nope. The top two cars on the list are the humble Honda Civic and Honda Accord, representing almost 15% of all car thefts in the country. Here are some checks you need to make. VIN numbers are prominently displayed in the door jams, on the windshield, under the hood, just to name a few places. Do they all match? Do they match the VIN on the car title? Does the name and address of the registered owner match the name and address on the driver's license of the person trying to sell you the car? Run the VIN through the National Insurance Crime Bureau database to find out if the vehicle is reported stolen and unrecovered. This is totally free, and you get a great tool to help you protect yourself against purchasing a stolen vehicle. NICB.org forward slash VIN check. This site will also tell you if the title has been salvaged, so another great feature there. You can also check the Carfax. Most of you know that I'm not a really big fan of Carfax. However, it will show you ownership history. See if it matches what you're being told about the vehicle. Number two, get a car inspection from a mechanic you trust to do the job. Interestingly, your mechanic can also help you avoid buying a stolen car. If you have any concerns, you're going to have an inspection done anyway, right? Well, ask your mechanic to check it out and give his opinion on the title, registration, VIN numbers, etc. If you don't know how to do this, he certainly will. All right. As far as getting a vehicle inspection, if you follow the homework guy videos on this channel, you know I advocate for getting a car inspection. What I'm not going to tell you right now is how you should have your car inspected. I already did that on a video titled, Get a Used Car Inspected Before You Buy. What I'm going to do is give you a few tips on how to find a good mechanic if you don't already have one, because you can't afford to skip this important step. Now, how do you find a good mechanic? First, don't rely on the internet or at least don't count on what you find online to be the litmus test of a good shop. I'm dead serious. Bad shops can easily fudge their ratings with friends or fake reviews, and they are average at best. On the other hand, really great shops can get smeared by a couple of disgruntled customers who go on a mission to destroy a good business. These idiots are everywhere, and even the best businesses end up finding a few of them. You can't do anything, including giving them a sack of gold to make them happy. Here's what I suggest instead. 
Ask your friends and family where they've taken their cars and if they had good experiences. Also reach out to colleagues, coworkers, others you know are likely to be getting their cars serviced. Find out who they like, then go meet the shop owners. This is homework you have to do, but it's so worth it because this is a vitally important part of your car shopping for used cars. There are a few things you can look for and a few questions you should be asking to help you out. First, don't put a lot of stock in the awards, classes completed, and the certifications you see hanging on the walls. While those are all fine and dandy, everybody has them. There are other things you can look for. Ask about their history. How did they get into doing auto mechanics in the first place? Why do they fix cars? Do they come from years of experience in a family tradition of working on cars? If so, you've likely found somebody who works on cars for more than just a paycheck. It's their passion. Because it's a passion, they eat, sleep, and breathe cars. They love it, and that makes all the difference in the world. Next, does the shop have high-end diagnostic tools? And because there's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to diagnostics, do they have diagnostic tools appropriate for the kind of car you are planning to buy? If not, I can tell you right now, they'll depend on too much guesswork when it comes to fixing your car, and you'll spend a lot of money in their shop while they learn how to fix your vehicle. Is the work area full of kids learning on the job? Nothing wrong with the younger generation, and nothing wrong with having youngsters working in the base. But if you don't see a healthy mix of older mechanics in the shop, you know, that gray hair, it's time to look for another place. Who are these kids learning from? Who do they get to ask when they can't figure something out, or even worse, when they screw something up? Who do they get to ask? Nobody. Next, find out what the shop specializes in. A shop that claims to do everything is not highly likely to be great at anything. The best mechanics know their limitations, know what they're good at, and they focus on their strengths, and they are very happy to tell you exactly what that is. Last, take a look at the kind of cars they have in the shop. Are they all junkers? Are they mainly an oil change shop or working on low-end cars? Or do they work on a nicer mix of cars, trucks, and SUVs that range from new to a bit older vehicles? When a higher dollar vehicle owner trusts them, that's a pretty solid sign right there. There's something consistent about people with plenty of money. While they may not worry much about what things cost, they generally don't hire people who are clueless. In fact, they usually hire the best people at anything. It's fine if you want to disagree with me on that, but in the end, you still get to be wrong. Number three, paperwork you need to have. A clear bill of sale is a must, and it's generally the responsibility of the seller to provide it. But as the buyer, it's your responsibility to make sure you don't leave without one. There's given information you need to have on your bill of sale. Your make and model of the vehicle, VIN or vehicle identification number, the agreed sale price, date of sale, name and addresses of both seller and buyer, proper signatures for both, any conditions or guarantees. 99% of private party sales should read sold as is in very bold print. And I even suggest including the words no warranty. You know, for those people who have a hard time understanding those three little words, sold as is. Make sure it's on the bill of sale. Then there's the title transfer, signing over the car. Don't screw this up. Read over the title carefully. Some of the same information you put on the bill of sale will also go on the title and you'll both need to sign it. But as I said, read over it carefully before you start filling in the blanks. Mistakes are hard to fix and crossing things out or using whiteout will likely force you into having to request a duplicate title. That's a pain in the caboose, so don't do that to yourself. A title has to be signed by the exact name that appears on the title. If the seller got married since they purchased the car, they should not sign with their new name. The signature needed is from the person who owned the car by the same name. If there are two owners listed, both owners have to sign. Now, I could give you generically sound information on what boxes you have to fill in on the title, but I'm not going to do that because that advice would have some of you making some very big mistakes that would be hard to fix. Every state is a bit different, but each has very clear and easy to understand instructions on how to complete a car title during a sale. If you do the sale at your local motor vehicle office, problem solved. Or you can look up the title transfers on your state DMV office. Either way, it's in your interest and the seller's interest to get it right. Look it up. Don't guess. Also, be aware that you may need to get your signatures notarized. Eight states required. The list of non-notary states are showing right here now. You also need to make sure any lien holders are resolved, but that subject we'll cover in part three. Number four, methods of payment. This is always a good time to have a friend or family member present and be in an area where there are security cameras. If you're paying 100% cash, 
pay in $100 bills and count out the money clearly with the seller observing. If you're financing through your own bank, you can bring a bank check. In this case, however, I strongly suggest you do the car deal in the bank parking lot. If the seller has any reason to question the validity of the check you provided, you can just take it inside and talk to the banker. You can also do a cashier's check or certified check. This method is also a possibility, but be aware that this is one area that fraud occurs. Scammers have learned how to produce checks that look like a bank-issued certified check, and it's also possible to put a stop payment on a certified check. A lot of people don't know that. While either of these forms of payment can work, talk to the seller and find out what they prefer, and then make the proper accommodations. Part three is coming up next. We'll hit lien holders, lien releases, and how to clear a lien off your title, and then how to report a sale. A very important step to properly shifting liability of ownership. We have several examples coming up from states we will share. It will be highly informative, and you'll find out just how simple this task is. A job that dealers like to charge you as much as a thousand bucks to do. You know, that outrageously high dock fee. After you see part three, you'll know how to do all of this yourself. All that coming up next in part three of Private Party Buying. Don't miss it. All right, if you appreciated the video today, consider giving us a thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy. Share the video on social media with your friends and make sure you join us on Facebook and Twitter too. Those links are appearing right here. We post notifications and other updates on our social media sites and answer car buyer questions there too. If you're trying to get a hold of me directly, it's a great place to do it. If you love what we do and want to say thanks with the tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see right here will be very easy to find in the description box down below. The Homework Guy team has helped millions of car buyers with videos, free car contract reviews, market updates, and much more, and will always have your back when it comes to great content. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video or stop in and say hello on Facebook or Twitter. It's a great ride producing video for all of you and hearing your feedback. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone.